Mini episode 335 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by the Unheard Scene, your home for great music interviews of all stripes. Follow them on the web at unheardscene.com. The FDH Lounge. You want to schedule your life around it. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. All right, everybody, welcome back to the FDH Lounge. Rick Morris and Kyle Ross, your FDH Lounge dignitaries and residents. As part of our football sessions here today, breaking down the National Football Conference. Yes, that is the strains of the WCW Monday Nitro theme you hear wafting in the background here. We, we like to keep it old school for those of us who remember us way back when. Yes, <laughs> I'll tell you what, how, how interesting that a the theme of a failed brand leads us into a conference that has failed in my book this year. Wow, you're going to the Morris School of Segways. Yes. Here. Very nice. The NFC, who would have thunk it? A conference that everyone had as the stronger of the two coming into the year. Yeah. That has not proven to be the case. The majority of bad teams in this league reside in this conference. Mm-hmm. While, we, I, I mean, when you look at the top ten next, next year's draft, almost in the all-NFC team. Yeah. I mean, right off the rip, you can just disqualify a ton of these teams already from playoff contention. Before we do that, we'll, we'll disqualify several, because I want to start in the NFC East. Okay. A division where someone's going to make the playoffs because that's the rule. Mm-hmm. And regrettably. Well, you hate all yeah. the markets and they get yes. talked about. The Dallas Cowboys are going to win this division. Yeah. They are the only team that has looked consistently decent this year. They've actually they haven't played really a bad game this year, Dallas. They played a bad second half against San Diego, but other than that, I mean, yeah. look, you make fun of Tony Romo all you want. He threw the terrible interception against Denver, but he wasn't covering Calvin Johnson last week against Detroit. That's not his job. Dallas has had about a, a bad 15 minutes during the course of the season. Their problem is those 15 minutes are comprised of the last couple of minutes, minutes of, of their, several uh, games. Yes, yeah. and I just think that when you look at the other three teams, and before the year, you and I both liked the Giants to win this division. That was kind yeah. of the consensus. Yeah, and we say that to cover ourselves now. <laughs> well, no, it's true. Most people have the Giants. Yeah, because it's interesting. Washington, we both had regressing, and yeah. they have. They're going to probably finish where I thought. I, I was kind of nervous because I seem to be on the very low end of Washington picking six, seven wins. And that's where, they, I, that's where they're going to probably finish. Although, let me go Redskin homer on you for a second. They were three and six last year, Kyle, before going on that run. No. It's, it, <laughs> it's, I'll say this for the anti I'll attack the other side of the yeah. argument. The anti oh, I, t- I told you this RG3 thing went last. If I'm buying a stock for next year, I think Washington's best suited for next year come back and maybe take the division giants are gonna have a new coach and they've got a lot of holes to fill that defense still dallas is me Dal- that's true well yeah th- so does every de- defense in this division yeah true which is why they all stink well, philadelphia needs a new quarterback who's the best right now dallas which yes. is one of the reasons we're picking them yeah dallas is i mean they're the only ones who are serviceable the other three yeah are i mean just atrocious i mean let me take a look here i think I mean, Washington's defense was historically bad through the first three weeks. Right. Uh, the Giants have found a way to be worse. Let's take a look here. Through well, the Redskins have given up 229 points in seven games. Oh my God! Which, if no if fans are butts about it, is just awful. Okay, 229 through seven games. Those 229 points allowed, second worst in the league, trailing only Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. And keep in mind, a lot of teams have played eight games. Yeah. And they've given up fewer points than the Redskins. The third most points allowed in the league. Well, no, it looks like Minnesota's up there now. But, I mean, the Giants have allowed 223, the Eagles at 2. So these are all bad defense. The Cowboys have allowed 186 yeah. uh, for sake of comparison. In, and they've played one one more game than the Redskins. So, yeah, the Cowboys have the best defense, got the best quarterback right now, and they better win it because next year the, the, their salary cap is a jumbled mess. Yeah. And they're going to – I mean, the problem is this team has no depth because they pay all the stars too much. Right. So next year they're going to take a step back. I got to think that if the Eagles get a real quarterback, they'll be okay. They're yeah. going to I still think they're going to I picked 8 and 8 before the year. I can still see it happening. It's possible. Po- it, with one asterisk. Mm-hmm. Matt Barkley doesn't play any extended time cuz he's terrible. Well, yeah, he's he is he, not the quarterback he's been of the pretty future. Poor so the, far. the quarterback of the future is not 
it, it's funny that the Eagles have had three quarterbacks mm. see significant time this year. None of them are the quarterback of the future. They're not re-signing Mike Vick. He's too injury prone. Right. He's too old. I mean, he's old at this point. Nick Foles, to me, is a guy who's going to bounce around in this league as a backup. I temporarily made the mistake, they say, of buying into him. But because only because he gets the ball out a lot quicker than Vic, which what is guys has Philly had like him over the years, you know, from Ty Detmer on down. You know what I mean? Kevin Cobb, Kevin, was supposed, Cobb. Kevin Cobb was supposed to be the quarterback of the future years ago, and he's, yeah. you know, now I don't know what he's doing. All these Western quarterbacks they bring in. Yeah, I mean, Nick Foles, it's funny that I watch, you know, I watch a great deal of college football, and no, at no point when I saw Arizona play, that's where yeah. Nick Foles was at, that I was like, oh, this guy's going to be an every week starter in the NFL. Yeah. So they need a quarterback. Meanwhile, well, Matty Ice from not too far away goes to Atlanta to become a star. Yeah. Well, yeah. he was at Boston College, Matty Ice. Yeah. Boston but College I mean, in Arizona. I, they're East, close. East Coast guy. Well. Oh, 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 okay. I got you. Yeah. Okay, I got I'm you. saying okay, Philly I'm sorry, goes to the other Mike. end of the country. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. But the Washington's problem, we're just jumping all around here with these teams. Cause yeah. You could just drive a truck through some of the holes they have. Yeah. Why don't they give the ball to Alfred Morris more? I don't know. That's Can somebody explain why? Like, RG3 is clearly still not healthy, so why do you not, like, run the ball more? Which is why you made that, you, you oh, we were 3-6 and six last year. Well, you ran the ball a lot, and the Shanahans, for whatever reason, just want to have RG3 drop back all the time. That's a great question. I, I It really I is. Alfred as, as, Morris has done His yards per carry is pretty good. Yeah, So because and that just shows you that some of the problems in that division with the other three teams are self-inflicted. But, again, Dallas – as they have been most years, a mediocre team. It just so happens this year, it, 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 that old saying about in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. If you're mediocre in this division, you're going to win it. And that's just what it comes down to. Dallas, The usual Dallas season, yeah. which is going to be good enough. It's going to win this. <laughs> Usually it isn't because one of the other teams kind of surprises you and wins yeah. 10 games. But honestly, Dallas could win this thing. I think they're going to be 9-7 and seven and yeah. win it. And they they seem destined to then be, you know, you and I joked about this before we went air. They're destined to be a home dog in the wild card round to the team that doesn't win the West, which yeah. is probably San Francisco. They'll be a hefty home dog, and, and I would say deservedly so. But, but hey, you know me. I'm already I give up my playoff game of the year already now. <laughs> but, um, no, I mean, that's where the East stands. I mean, it's the e- easily the worst division. It's unbelievable. I, I saw a stat last night on Monday Night Football. Best non-division records. Mm-hmm. AFC West is number one. NFC East is last. You know why? The AFC West, which is, is kind of perceived, you know, obviously with Peyton Manning in the division now, it, it, yeah. the reputation has become much better the last two years. But it, was, it wasn't that long ago. It was kind of a worthless division, yeah. same as the NFC West, True. ironically enough, where the you know the NFC East, all oh, the tradition, oh, all the big names. The AFC West is clobbered. The NFC East. They're kicking year. the sand I mean, in the face. I mean, yeah. Denver swept it already. Yeah. They're already four and zero. San Diego's two and zero. Kansas City's two and zero. The only loss was Oakland against Washington. Mm-hmm. So look, they're going to beat up on each other. Apparently, right. the division not win a lot of other games. That should be enough. Dallas goes nine and seven. Take this. Well, game. and Washington had that motivation. Of, of wanting to avenge that Super Bowl 18 loss. So you almost have to throw that one out, don't you? you and <laughs> yes, I'm sure. <laughs> I just wanted sure. to get your goat with you that one. Mark Lawrence's tread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On his Play any stuff. team that lost the Super Bowl to the team they're playing more than 20 <laughs> yeah. years ago. Um, okay. So the NFC East, do you believe with this, do you believe this statement? I can't believe you would. Setting one team to the playoffs. The oh, clearly. Okay. And, again, we're saying Dallas right now, and I believe it strongly. I will say this. Having said that, that even a team like the two and six Giants, not a hundred percent dead, just because they're in the worst division in football. Two and six puts are you two games out week? right now. Are they off this week? They they are, are off this, this week. week, and then yes. they then they host Oakland in yeah. a, uh, Oakland, and that's a one o'clock game. So yeah. you know Oakland has no chance. So I mean, if 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 Dallas ends up, and we the best case scenario, they. Yeah, they just dug themselves too big a hole. Probably. 0-6, you do not come back from 0-6 to make the playoffs. The, the best-case scenario for, for them or they for anybody else. They may play themselves else, out of Clowney, though, right? And which they, is who they need yeah, badly. They, they probably did. It, it, is it if Dallas ends up underachieving what we predict – and going say seven and nine, and then you limp into seven and nine and take it from them on a tiebreaker. That's the scenario for any of the other teams in here, which is not a great scenario. Philadelphia does stretch. play Dallas the last week of the year. Yeah, that could be for the division, and it, we know Dallas is struggling that spot. Yes, yes. So, so that uh, the thing that will save Dallas is that I don't think the division will still be in any doubt, and their usual week seventeen gag will be to no effect whatsoever because it won't change the seating. In the other three divisions. There's not a whole lot of, of surprise, so, somewhat similar to the AFC, with 
be somewhat exception of, where it's a little bit different in the NFC than the AFC, was that in the South, there was more contention about what was going to happen. I will say, credit where credit is due, you picked New Orleans, I did not, I stayed with Atlanta. I, I love New Orleans I coming here. You know that I said the yeah. team I was highest on, yeah. higher on than anyone this year was New Orleans, it seemed. I, I, I said 11 wins. They're probably going to exceed that. I'm not going to be a bitch and cry asterisk because of injuries, but I don't think you can completely dismiss it in the case of Atlanta. I didn't think it would be this easy because but I think it's over. Yeah, I think it's it, over it, at this it point. Is, it is over, and I will say this. An Atlanta team at the pace that I expected them to be at would still be looking up at New Orleans the way they've played. I have to say that in fairness. New Orleans has played much better than I thought. Okay, let's take a look. Assuming the NFC East just puts the division champ in the playoffs, that's five playoff spots yes. go to the other three divisions. Four of those spots are going to go to the following teams. New Orleans, Green Bay out of the north. I, I think they're starting to hit their stride despite the injuries. I think they'll win the division. Yeah. And then San Fran- uh, Seattle and San Francisco in the west. And here's the thing, too. And, and those are all expected. Scheduling is destiny when you look at this because the game that will probably be the game of the second half of the season, and to me it's kind of funny because I like to take a lot of pleasure – in how the ostensible worldwide leader oh, grossly, we go. grossly overpays for Monday Night Football and gets crap games to show for it. But they're getting the biggest game of the second half of the season oh, by they do. far. Is this the New Week Orleans-Seattle 11, game? New yes. Orleans at Seattle, and that's the whole thing, too. When you look at those two teams, the reason that I'm going with now, and, and again, what Seattle has to deal with that New Orleans doesn't is San Fran can still jump up and win this division. I think Seattle's going to hang on, but it, it, that could go either way. But what really helps Seattle in the battle with New Orleans is hosting that game there because both Seattle and New Orleans, the way they've been playing, are about unbeatable at home. On a Monday night, New Orleans has got to go in there and probably loses their best shot at the number one seed in the playoffs because of it. It's the schedule. We talked about this on the weekly show Yeah. once. Can you imagine if those are the top two seeds, which I'm projecting them to be right now? Me too. I mean, that almost kills all the teams that play on Wild Card Weekend because who's going to go in and win in both those places yeah. back-to-back weeks? Right. And, I mean, there's a very good chance that both of them are running the table at home. I mean, if you remember, the Saints haven't lost a game with Sean Payton as the coach right. since 2010 because they ran the yeah. table the last year. He, he was suspended last year. Yeah. And then in 2010, they went 9-0, and mm-hmm. including a playoff win against Detroit. Yeah. Seattle, they haven't lost at home in forever. And, by the way, here's the key thing with Seattle. Mm-hmm. They already have four road wins. Yeah. They still have five home games left, and they're, what, 7-1? and one? I think that's the main reason I mean, I'm going with them yeah, over I mean, San th- Fran. Th- th- look, Seattle was my Super Bowl pick before the year. I'm mm-hmm. sticking with it. I know they did not look good Monday night against the Rams. Right. But here's the key. Their offensive line is terrible now right. because of injury. They get those guys healthy again. They're going to get Percy Harvin in the lineup. Yes. Folks, they're 7-1 and one with these problems. They are. And if they get home field, I mean, the only thing that scares me is that it's just widely assumed they're winning their home game. A little bit more than New Orleans. You know, New Orleans, right. everyone's like, ooh, we're, we're scared of New Orleans at home. But Seattle was like, well, yeah, they'll win every game at home. Which, look, I wouldn't be shocked if they did again. Well, they again, uh, New Orleans is going to be tough. Uh, but they already got the San Francisco at home game yeah. out of the now, they'll way. They'll probably lose at that. I mean, that Harbaugh with they'll revenge. Split, they'll, yes. pr- th- they'll, but they'll split. But the th- and the thing of it is, the the only caveat to your theory, which I generally agree with, about how it would be a foregone conclusion of New Orleans at Seattle for the uh, the NFC Championship. Oh, no. One it, of them could lose. I'm just saying that there's no team that's going to win in both places. Back okay, back all right. Weeks. Well, I was going to say the caveat is the third team in the discussion here. San Francisco, if anybody's good enough to go in and get the job done in either place, it would be them. Yeah, but if you They're do it one place, likely. here's the thing. You're you going to have to come back weeks. the next week. And, yeah. and chances, unless if well, both of them got upset not only that, off the bye, which I don't see happening. Not only that, the li- here's the likeliest scenario because of the way the seating is likely to go. The likeliest scenario would be that San Francisco would have to play Seattle first. And you've talked about that, the car crash effect of playing somebody the week after yeah. se- uh, playing Seattle. Way that it used oh, to New Orleans could Pittsburgh. win in Seattle, maybe in a rematch list. But I'm saying that none. No, of the but I'm saying San Francisco would go into New Orleans, oh. having been tenderized by Seattle the week before. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Your Seattle schedule, okay? Next three weeks versus Tampa Bay, huge revenge game that they're going to be up for in Atlanta. Yeah, all the 1976 expansion teams. Okay. Oh, that was, oh, that was Tampa. Oh, Tampa Bay. Is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Then they're at home versus Minnesota. Yeah. Then they get a late bye. Oh, they get a bye going to the New Orleans game, too. That doesn't even seem fair. Yeah. <laughs> then they're at San Fran, which doesn't set up well for them. And then they have the Giants. Then they close versus Arizona and St. Louis. Uh, worst case scenario, 12-4 mm-hmm. and four for yeah. Seattle. Worst case scenario is 12-4. and four. Yeah. Probably 13-3. and three. And you look at New Orleans. Ooh, let's see. What do they have? 
I know they still have to go at Atlanta, which doesn't, which like Seattle, but Seattle's going to be up for that game at Atlanta after the playoffs are, are last we, year. Are we agreeing? Let's take our agreement a step further while you're looking that up. In whatever order, Seattle, New Orleans, San Francisco are the one, two, and five. I, I, yeah, we can. Ag- we and have Green, to agree and Green on that. Bay is going to be the three, and the NFC East Probably, will be the yes, four. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, New Orleans. Here's the thing: the difference, though, they still have five road games, while Seattle has only three left. Okay. I think Seattle. If I'm proje- Seattle's one, New Orleans two, Green Bay three, San Francisco five, Dallas four. And I think New Orleans is even a little bit more human on the road than Sa- than Seattle is. N- maybe yes. not by much. Yes, because they're they're so they're such a dome team. Yeah, you know that they're you, they lo- they're just built to win indoors. Yeah, they're ro- well. Here's the thing: their road games are in Atlanta, though, mm-hmm. at St. Louis. Those are both domes. Yeah, uh, they are at Carolina late in the year. Um, Carolina may could be, be a, we'll, we'll talk about them, yeah. yeah. And then they're at the Jets this week. Um, but, no, I mean, both those teams are, are going to be, I think, 12-win teams, and yeah. they'll get the buys. So that leaves us with one playoff spot, like the AFC. So let's hit this discussion. Okay. I'm going to disqualify some teams. Okay. Tell me if you agree. All right. And we've already disqualified the rest of the non-Dallas NFC East. Yes. Tampa Bay. They haven't won a game. Easiest one there, yeah. Greg Schiano, worst coach in the league as right now. you know what's right interesting now. with them? I was thinking about who they should hire. Who? No, you, you, I don't have an answer because oh. here's the problem. <laughs> here's the problem. They've got a good defense, right? So I'm, I was thinking mm, who on are the paper, be- theoretically. Okay, who are the best? Ba- so I think they get need a guy, with an o- especially in that division, with an offensive mindset. Yeah. Who's the best young offense coordinator that would be a, that's going to be a hot candidate? Jay Gruden, right? They're not going to hire him because they had a bad experience with John Gruden. That's true. And they're not going to hire a college coach after – because, you know, there's some talk – uh, Char- this Charlie Strong at Louisville has yeah. made a lot of waves. Oh, we should bring in this Charlie Strong. They're not going to bring in a college coach after this disaster with Shiano. Ooh, no. I think it could be Daryl Bevel of Seattle. Okay. Although he called a terrible game last night. If could he's be. auditioning for head coach, Ooh. you might want to destroy that tape. Let me ask you this. Especially if Seattle wins the Super Bowl. I mean, it, fairly or unfairly, a lot of times it tends to be coming down to the, the climate of what's happening with a specific team. Relative to the end of last year, how much bloom is off the rose of Kyle Shanahan? Because that's an obvious candidate right there if you're talking about offense and developing a quarterback. A decent amount of bloom off the yeah, rose? Yeah, uh, I don't know. Don't, has, he, has he ever been away from his father? No, that's, an, uh, that's another consideration as well. I mean, maybe he's just comfortable. I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe he wants to let it ride with Washington. Yeah. He's comfortable. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. All right. That I, was, that I don't was know. The to thought. me, to me, because see, you you know the way this league works. Yes. That the the final teams remaining in the playoffs. Yeah. Their coordinators get cherry picked. Yes. And you know, w- I mean, Gus Bradley was Seattle's defense right. coordinator. He's now in Jacksonville. I could see perhaps. Um, well, you know, Bevel, Bevel was a guy who thought last year that he, they were going to lose him. And Gruden's yeah. another guy who they so. What, You're right so about that. Bad fit for Gruden. Yeah. yeah. Wrong uh, last well, name. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and who knows? Because he, he's, let's be, I mean, he's done a great job, but he, his career has certainly been fast tracked by the last. Yes. Year. All right. So, Tampa Bay's out. I think your boys in Atlanta are out. I yeah, think clearly, the loss yes, area. Yes. Again, like That's Houston, it. like yeah. Houston, it's just not their year. Too many injuries. Right. And I think, do we both agree it's not going to be Arizona or St. Louis? In the uh, West? St. We, Louis we is going yeah. to really stink. And again, I'm going to go back to what I said about uh, Atlanta. Because I, I picked St. Louis to make the playoffs because there, I knew there would be one team making it that would be a surprise, and I think we can agree now that that, that sixth seed is going to be a surprise. I thought it would be St. Louis uh, in a big tiebreaker with some other teams. I will not hide behind the Sam Bradford injury because they weren't going to do it even no, before they, he they went down. No, they just looked I bad. I won't do it, yeah. They just look bad. Are yeah. they going to go quarterback next year? They're they gonna, are. Here's the thing. Yeah. Now, it's they, funny. They do have I a massive were, obligation I, I said this. I said Bradford, this when we did the preview. Yeah. Before the year, mm-hmm. and I'm going to stand by it. I think you were a year early with St. Louis. I might be. Because they have two top ten picks yeah. potentially next year because they get Washingtons from the RG3 trade. Yes. So, you know, we, everyone talked about, oh, Cleveland, no, and what they were doing with the Richardson trade. That's why I said the Browns would have to vastly overpay. Look at who's in front of them. The Rams are going to have two picks probably before the Browns' first pick. They're going to have right. two top ten picks because I don't see them winning a lot of games. Right. But one of them could be in the top five. Could be. So – could be, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll rule those teams out. Okay, this is and that a little would bit leave, easier. And that that leaves there's only one the, one more slam dunk out team. That being Minnesota. Oh, I forgot to Come mention on. them. Yeah, Minnesota's got to be. Oh, they stink. Yeah, they're, they're, they're terrible. Horrible. I mean, yeah. they're they're. they're their next team's going quarterback shopping, you know, two years after taking Christian Ponder inexplicably in the first round. So that's oh something wow. I screamed Listen about to this. when they did it. The top three picks. Yeah, because Minnesota lost to the Giants. So yeah, they did. They'll probably be in picking in front of them. The, the top three picks are probably going to be Jacksonville, Tampa, and Minnesota. Those are all quarterbacks. Yeah. 
Oof. So uh, yeah, Minnesota, look, they were the obvious candidates to regress this year. Mm-hmm. They're even worse than I thought. Yeah. The defense has been killed by injuries. Uh, well, well, they've got thought, nothing out of quarterback. We both thought they, Minnesota They've tried three be, quarterbacks, and they all stink. Yeah, we both thought Minnesota was going to be bad last year. And it's a thing of where they just went on one of these runs. Well, Adrian Peterson largely literally carried, went on uh, one of these runs. Adrian historic. Peterson, yeah, one of the greatest seasons in NFL history. By any, I mean, not just a running back, by any player. He dragged them to the playoffs. And you're seeing this year what happens when a bad team is unable to be dragged to the playoffs by the equivalent of Mark Henry hauling an 18 yeah. <laughs> wheeler, which is essentially what we saw last year. I said six wins before the year, and there's mm-hmm. no way they're getting to it. Not even close. So not it, even it's close. good. I bet uh, over the summer, I bet a guy, mm-hmm. uh, the, the friend um, that Minnesota would finish in last place in this division. He, he's from Minnesota. Okay. He's a big homer. We were hammered. It was like two in the morning. I was mm-hmm. like, I'm going to take this guy's money. <laughs> Although what's funny is I chickened out because I was like, yeah, they're going to only win like six games. And she was like, oh, you think they're only going to win six games? And I got like real nervous. I was like, God, is this the alcohol talking? Am I just trying to like make this guy mad? They were the I'm, like, I'm like, let's do a pick. I'm like, I hedged myself and said, let's, fin- let's do him for last place. So, Well, the thing of it is, though, he- here's the thing in terms of the eye test, okay? Like, we both thought. Leslie Frazier, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. That, he, that... He, he may, uh, may want to update his LinkedIn profile pretty soon. <laughs> I, I, I haven't heard it put that way too many times, but that's outstanding. Here's the thing, is that, again, a very good, because he was a guy who was a perennial candidate for jobs, a very good defensive coordinator. We see, again, another Peter Principal guy. Yeah. Stick to being a D coordinator, bro. That's that's your I ceiling. I mean, it makes sense why. I mean, these guys are real successful. You give a chance, yeah. but it just, yeah. you can always kind of tell. And, yeah. and, and, and Leslie Frazier, would you hire him again? Is Absolutely head, not. Is that, this, yeah. this is it. He's he's one and done based on how he's done. But here's the thing, though. In terms of the eye test, we talked about Indianapolis when we were doing our AFC one. We expected them to regress, but it was mostly because of the numbers. Indianapolis was a, was a team where – Oh, like, I, I, I thought they even, would bounce back. Like, yeah, Minnesota's like, not a team I'm buying stock in. It, like, like, even if they, Indianapolis was by no means – According to the numbers, a legitimate eleven and five team last year. They were way closer to being a legitimate eleven and five than Minnesota was a legitimate ten and six. It, the, the gap yeah. between the flukiness is not even close. The flukiness in what Minnesota did is off the charts. You're seeing what happens this year when there is no flukiness. First thing I do when I start breaking down the league, yeah. and projecting things is all right. Which playoff teams are not going to make it yeah. this year? Because you know about the turnover rule. Yeah. it's always at least four. I immediately put them Minnesota on that was list. the first one. I was yeah. like, they're out. Yeah. No way. Yeah, that so, was – so we got a bubble I in the I forgot about this. So there's yeah. only three teams really competing for that last spot, according to you and I. Yeah. Well, and I tell you what, I would probably be going in a different direction were it not for the injury in Chicago. Yeah, I was going to say, Cutler. Chicago was a team, and we'll have to see how they can make it without Cutler. Yeah. But the schedule's not good Yeah. With that, with, when for the next couple of weeks. It's huge. Their, their season, unfortunately, is hanging in the balance over the next month. Yeah. And I don't like their chances. Yeah. Um, but Cutler, by the way, this is like the third year in a row he's gotten hurt at this point of the season. Yeah. Are they going to go in a different direction if they don't make the playoffs this year? Well, this I mean, if he comes back and leads him to a playoff berth, okay, he earns the contract, he's back. But this was going to be the make or break year on do we commit to Cutler or not. Here's the thing, he's though. Been, he started out great, and he's yeah. just looked bad of late. Like, they have some losses. Like, there was a point where I'm like, man, I think Chicago could really mm-hmm. maybe win this division 11-5. and five. Yeah. But then they, I mean, hold on, let me bring up Chicago's schedule here because, you know, they're coming off a bye, and they're right. playing Green Bay without Cutler this week mm-hmm. on Monday night. But before that bye week, they had some kind of mystifying. They had the 45-41 loss to the Redskins. Yeah. You know, shame on me. I thought they were going to show up at home against the Saints. They didn't. You know, they're lucky. Two of their wins were come from behind, Cincinnati and Minnesota, weeks yeah. one and two. So things could really be worse here. Uh, check it out. Next couple weeks, some some say, yeah, even if they lost both of them, they're still in the discussion, I think. They, they're at Green Bay Monday, okay. as I said, and then they will be at home in a revenge spot against Detroit, who's off a bye. Okay. If they go 0-2, mm-hmm. which – Put the odd, the them. odds will say they will. Yeah, that's four and five. They're done. That's five losses in six games. But then the schedule, Rick Morris, does get easier. But look, no versus it, Baltimore, at St. Louis, at Minnesota, versus Dallas on Monday night, at Cleveland, at Philly. Here's the thing, though: you have no margin for error at that point because. Under this scenario, Detroit will have swept the season series. Yeah, that, which, is yeah that, would, that would be killer. Yeah. You're right. If, yeah. if, if you're, that would be killer. Yeah, they, they have to leapfrog the Lions while being behind them. Okay. So it's unlikely well, in, spe- in looking at it. Well, sp- 
Speaking of the Lions, I was going to transition there. Well, the last summer. thing on the Bears, I don't think they'll move on for cut from Cutler if for no other reason than this. How many teams have we talked about? And again, next year's going to be a great year for quarterbacks. Bears are going to be drafting in the twenties. They're not. They're not going to. Yeah, be doing who are that. they going to get better than Jake? Like the thing is, okay, yeah. it's great. Okay, this guy's not really. But like, who are you going to get better than Jake? Yeah, Cutler? Jake Cutler's still a top fifteen quarterback. If they do anything, it's a, it's a thing where, and I, I have to say, you know, like uh, my my friend uh, Ken Beck's the scout from First Down Scouting of the guys out there that he considers to be uh, you know diamonds in the rough. If you see the Bears do anything, it might be a thing of like I've kind of wondered like, well, gee, why has nobody traded for Drew Stanton and given him a shot? If they do anything, it'll be like a move around the margins like that. Yeah, I take it from your face, you're not a big Drew Stanton guy. I'm not saying that, but you can't go from Jay Cutler to Drew Stanton. <laughs> By the way, another problem with the Bears, their defense stinks. Well, I mean, I mean as competition for oh. Cutler. Oh, oh, their defense is awful. It is. This it's, year. it's gotten... It, I mean, unless, if they don't force turnovers, they give up a lot of points. Yeah, it, it has really, really aged. In looking at the Lions, and I said off air, I didn't expect you to approve of my pick. They are my pick for the last spot. Oh, in, I have in no the, problem with that wild pick. Card. Because, well, I know you're not a big Jim Schwartz guy, but... I'm not. To me... I would save his job if they make the playoffs. It was oh, it, clearly it should. Uh, if, if they don't make the playoffs, is he gone? I don't think. I don't, th- I I don't think so. Things. I mean, it would say it, you'd be saying, okay, Jim Schwartz, you're gone because you haven't made the playoffs in two of the last three years. The Lions what do you think are of not his a, evil goatee. <laughs> I, I'm just I keep asking I think random it's a good, questions. I think it's a good move. Okay. I, I think it's a very good move. Yeah, hey, you, you don't want to you don't want to mess with what's working there. But I looked at it. I, I started kind of preparing for this a little bit mentally when you said last week we, we, this would be a good week for this segment. I said to myself, if they beat Dallas, I'm picking them, and, and I'm going to stick to that. That was a huge that. win. That was. That was a sign to me about what kind of a team they are. Having said that, I mean, and I alluded to this before, we may get to the point because, you know, a lot of this comes to public expectations and Vegas and everything like that. The way Detroit's playing, there may be a little bit of a Detroit bubble in the second half, and that bubble may pop. But this is still a team easily that could go nine and seven and grab that last spot. And, and having said that, probably be cannon, cannon fodder at Lambeau Field in the first round, as I think they would be. But to at least make it. And I was, by it, the way, one one more thing too. And I say we this, both said Detroit would improve this year to like eight and eight and be in the discussion. Yeah. So I mean, th- this is this is a thing of not going much further up than that. Them being a little bit better than that. I want to say this also too because I've seen the first kind of stirrings after his game last week. And by the way, that loudmouth punk Des Bryant. I want to say as a Megatron fantasy owner, can he please play against him every week? That would be uh, nice. Uh, uh, but here's the thing. I, I'm already starting to see. I, I think it might, was it Bill Simmons or somebody speculating about. What would it take for um, uh, you know the whispers to start for Megatron for MVP? Look, what he's doing in Detroit, it's not the exact same thing as what Peterson did in Minnesota. It's not the exact same one-man show. But they but looked horrible a, that one game without him. It's along the same lines, Kyle Ross. It's along the no, same lines. He needs to be in the discussion. I'm going to surprise you even more. Yeah. I'm going to agree with you that Detroit gets it. Okay. Over the only team we haven't talked about and a team that we're... I really bar- thought you'd go with Carolina. You've been a Carolina booster the last couple of years. I have, and I'll tell you what is very nice to see, even if they don't make it. Ron Rivera, all of a sudden, he must read Barnwell because he just <laughs> goes for it on fourth down all the time. And imagine when you have a six foot six quarterback mm-hmm. with 270 pounds, drafted number one overall, who... In the limited amount of time you allowed him to go for it on fourth and third and one and fourth and one made it like 85 percent of the time wow look he, he still keeps getting converting those plays yeah. imagine that mm-hmm. carolina i think initially is going to have the it's going to be close by the way if detroit who's a five and three already mm-hmm. comes off the bye and wins in chicago and gets a six and three mm-hmm. they're looking good yeah they're it, sitting pretty it over yeah i don't know over but they'll be well, sitting pretty they'll take chicago out of it yes Carolina now four and three, first time in Re- under Rivera. They're over five hundred. They are at home versus Atlanta uh-huh. this week. They're favored to win. They could get to five and three. I'll tell you what, the numbers. We've talked about this, uh, and to, to your surprise, we talked about it last week. I know the numbers love Carolina. Yeah, this year they are number four in DVOA at Football Outsiders. Okay. Uh, entering last week when they covered, they were number they were tied with Kansas City number eight in the Vegas power rankings and their point differential is very good yeah uh, it, now the only we, we keep talking about asterisks and caveats and stuff like that they still have that two and 14 record in games decided by seven points or less with they Rivera do. Newton they're winning and their win streak Rick Morris has not exactly come against the finest of opponents that is true. Minnesota 
St. Louis, Tampa Bay. Detroit's at least beaten some good teams. Yeah. So it's another reason I lean towards them. Yeah, and Carolina has not played New Orleans yet, I don't believe. And so they'll have to, by law they'll have to play them twice. <laughs> yeah. Whereas Detroit, they've already taken their loss at Lambeau. They'll get a chance at revenge yeah. on Thanksgiving, a game they always lose traditionally, mm -hmm. but um, it'll at least be at home. Carolina's schedule down the stretch is kind of hard. They Let's say they beat Atlanta this week at the 5-3. Mm -hmm. Next two weeks, they're at San Fran. They'll be off a of bye. Oof. And then they'll have a huge Monday night home game against New England. So, so that next game, talk about a trifecta. It's on the West Coast. Yeah. They're playing the Niners, Awful. and the Niners are off a bye. And then they're at home <laughs> versus New England on Monday night. That screams that screams ugly result. Things start going south to that, me. That game feels like I would see them flip. at 5-5 five and five then, and then they have – they, they'd be 5-5 five and five with New Orleans still twice and at Atlanta and at Miami. I think they're going to miss out. I, th I think they're going to be 8-8 eight and eight and miss out. Detroit, I got 9-7. and seven, They make it. Let me do what you, well, with you what you've done with me a few times. Pose the question. If that happens, second half skid missed the playoffs. Ron Rivera, is he gone? I think so. Yeah. He's he gone. It depends how he coaches. That's, I guess that's I mean, true. He, 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 look. I guess that's true. He's a better coach now than he was three weeks ago. Yeah. And Ron Rivera can't go out on the field and catch Cam Newton passes, which is a problem. Right. If you gave Cam Newton Calvin Johnson, good luck, because Carolina's receivers are off. I, I know we got. I picked a, up Brandon LaFell for one of my teams on a flyer. About him. <laughs> He's yeah. not good. He shouldn't be starting. And your boy Ted Ginn just stinks. Too bad Dominic Hickson's hurt all the time. And Steve Smith is old. Yeah. I mean, you talk about a team that's got to have their eye on Marquise Lee. We keep referencing the draft. Yes. They don't need a quarterback, Carolina. They need a receiver. Real bad. I'm surprised. Well, this Jerry Richardson's real cheap. That's true. I'm surprised with Newton there, though, that they can't attract a free agent wide receiver. Do they make a trade for Josh Gordon? Do they go oh, get? Oh, they might. Do they get Hakeem Nix? That, that's possible. Yeah. By the way, the trade Nicks. deadline has passed since we've been on the air. Has there been any big moves here? Let's break some news here. Yeah, you, you may hear screaming from me if there's anything about Josh Gordon being. Let's moved. see here. I, I'm hitting. I'm hitting the button here. <laughs> yeah. I'm hitting the button here, here. People are hearing this in real time. This is this is real professional, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> Let's just check the wire here. Let's just and check gentlemen. the wire, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> and see if there's been any trades today. This is this is where we're using our ability to be entertaining as a crutch because people are laughing along with us. I hope so. <laughs> instead at least. of just I don't <laughs> see any. So no, no. Okay, I don't see any. No, no. trades. Okay. okay. I do see Jerry Jones claim Deion Sanders could have stopped Megatron. Sopa Goa to the Patriots. Stop the presses. But uh, in terms of this, here's the thing, though. There's not a lot of, I mean, okay, I, I guess I'm contradicting myself when I think about Derek Mike Rose has also publicly claimed that his IQ is higher, which is interesting. <laughs> Maybe he's been using that luminosity or whatever it is. <laughs> like the cute brunette chick that keeps showing up on the click-through ads. Yes. But, uh, as far as it goes... <laughs> You know, I, yeah, I guess I'm going to contradict what I'm about to say because I'm thinking about Mike Wallace, who did make money in free agency. But you don't you – know, somebody like Dwayne Bowe. I, I thought you, Dwayne Bowe was going to attract attention. You don't, and pay, you don't want to pay Kansas for a receiver because you can get so many good ones late in the rounds. You actually don't even want to take one in the first round. But it's like – but it's, I, don't, I don't get that line of thinking because it's still a crapshoot. We can just get one later. Well, it's true. It's yeah, true. if you're it, it really good your and you're really lucky. I yeah, mean, yeah it's a, you if, if you can just find that diamond in the rough who the rest of the league undervalues and yeah. you're – you know, I mean, I thought T.Y. Hilton was a steal when the Colts mm -hmm. got him. I had wa he played at a small school, Florida International, mm -hmm. because I'm a degenerate. I obviously watch a lot of <laughs> Tuesday night Sunbelt games and thought he was good. Uh -huh. But um, so, I mean, if you could get your scouting done right, okay, but you're right. I mean, if Marquis Lee, maybe in their future, they need a receiver. They do. They do. That's a they, slam great, dunk But move. you know what? They have a great front seven, Carolina. They do. Yes, does Detroit. They do. Yeah, they're, they're both coming along very, very well in that regard. So uh, we're actually agreeing on all the playoff teams here and, and probably just about on uh, the slotting of them as well. I, I'm saying Seattle 1, New Orleans 2, yep. San Francisco 5. Are you? Yep, and uh, Green Bay 3, right. Dallas 4, Detroit 6. That's the exact order that I have. All right, so my, my first round, I'm looking at it, and I'm saying uh, San Fran goes in and does Dallas. Uh, it might be ugly. Uh, the other one being, again, yeah. I would love to take Dallas in that game. <laughs> I can see you doing that. Uh, the other one is basically Detroit. Thank you for participating in this year's playoffs. Go up to Lambeau, Lambeau yeah. and get done. So uh, that leaves us with a second round of what we were denied last year, San Francisco and Seattle meeting in the playoffs, the rubber match in the playoffs. What did I say before? Schedule is destiny. That game, the way that we're figuring it, would be at Seattle. That makes all the difference in the world. 
Uh, San Francisco, I'm seeing a lot of people dogging them and saying they're like not really as good as their record, which I don't really understand. Yeah, they've beaten up on the bad teams, but that was what you're, but they've beaten up on them. Yeah, they, they have, but it, I mean, like, that, that loss to Indianapolis doesn't look nearly as bad now, does it? I mean, it, there there's, no. there, there's some well, other... Well, I mean, they shouldn't have lost as badly. No, they shouldn't have, but I mean, some things That's look the thing. a there little bit... That's two losses they didn't look good in. I, I understand that. By the way, why have the... It's nice to see that they're going back to the read option. I don't understand why teams that have success with the read option, they're like, yeah, well, all the defenses will catch on to this. Let's right. just abandon it. How about you let the defenses catch that, up? Like, keep using it until you're convinced. That, just don't assume that the defenses are ready for it. Because yeah. I saw Colin Kaepernick running wild, yeah. granted against Jacksonville. Yeah. But, I mean. That, that's, that's, you, know, you know who's thinking that embodies right there? One of the worst coaches in recent times, Botch Davis. 2002. Pitts puke gets blown off the field the first two games by spread offenses. Game three, Browns don't run any of it with their quote-unquote four deuces. And then he says afterwards, well, surely they would have prepared after what happened to them against Oakland and New England the last two weeks. You never do that. You never make that assumption. You make the other team shut yes, it down. You analysis. absolutely have to. Very well, good I, uh, in my tortured mind, I never let go of these kinds of things Let's here. Let's see. I, I've got Seattle beating San Francisco. I've got the result of the other game, as you said. How's anybody going to go into either place and get it done? I think Green Bay could. Green would Bay's give a great a dome a team. Yes. Green Bay's a great dome team. I, I they think are, that, this is because they basically are a dome team that plays a Lambo. Here in Rogers' statistics, I yeah. saw something. I don't have them off hand the right here. Of a are dome unbelievable team. in domes. Yeah. They Remember have, last year when yeah. they played Minnesota in the first round of the playoffs? Yeah. All the Green Bay players were like, "Yeah, we kind of wish this game was in Minnesota." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, I could see that being a coin flip game, and thus I'm still sticking with Seattle to win. I'm not yeah. going round by round. I'm just staying Seattle. Still, my th- I'm still sticking with what I said before the season: Seattle over Denver. Super God Bowl. bless you, because again, my my preseason pick was uh, San Francisco over Houston in the Super Bowl. I can make a heck of a case for San Francisco still coming out of the field in the NFC. But again, I will defer on this one here. So we actually are picking all of the seeding the same in the NFC and all of the playoff games the same results in the NFC. Which uh, go ahead, get down on it right now, ladies and gentlemen, because that's I love the outcome. It. We have predicted it ahead of time. But uh, Seattle over uh, Denver in the Super Bowl. It's interesting because we we talked about uh, this and again. That was your preseason pick, and and that now looks like the the, the chalk pick way to go. I saw you make a reference, uh, our, our good friend, uh, FDH Lounge senior editor Jason Jones, a little thread on Facebook there. Uh-oh, what is about, going on uh, here? Uh, well, I wanted to bring up what you mentioned about that, about uh, the Denver-Indianapolis game. Was Denver at all exposed with their wide receivers vis-a-vis oh. what they would find against Seattle? Because, again, keep in mind the kind of start that Denver had against a crappy D.C. secondary this past week, they were still jamming them up by playing physical here. Is that the blueprint that yes. Seattle can use to just take them apart? Wes Welker and Eric Decker mm-hmm. are not getting open against Brandon Browner and Richard yeah. Sherman. Now, it'll be interesting. You still have Demarius Thomas. Right. Uh, and then Sherman may go on him. Right. But, I mean, it doesn't matter. Whoever Rick, Rick, by the way, remember when Darrell Revis was trying to still claim he was the best cornerback in the yeah. game? Hit the bricks, pal. Yeah. I mean, Richard, I mean, it's pretty funny. Everyone, Richard Sherman, say what you will about mm-hmm. all the trash talking. He ripped Brady, and everyone's like, who is this guy to be talking trash to Tom Brady? Oops, turns out he's really good. Yeah. And then he claims, oh, I'm the best quarterback in the league. Oh, what about Darrell Revis? Well, it turns out he's better than Revis, too. Darrell Revis was last the best cornerback in the league. Right about the time, give or take, before Obamacare was foisted upon the land. That, that's right about the, uh, the, the, the the give or take line of, of when that changed. Well, we've, got Richard, so. we've got Richard Sherman and, semi- and quasi-universal health care. What a <laughs> fantastic country we live in, Rick Morris. <laughs> Outstanding. The other thing is, too, the, the whole odd kind of thing of this year's Super Bowl the conditions probably going to be pretty bad in that wouldn't favor the Meadowlands. That would not favor exactly. Denver. That favor, that favors Seattle. I love, I love how we're handicapping a mythological game six months from now. <laughs> and doing, I believe, a damn good job. This of is it. what we do. Yes. Well, that that would really because again, Denver or, or Seattle is going to want to kind of muddy it up against Denver to, to try to get that offense out of rhythm. It would make it a lot easier to do. Uh, on the the slick turf of the Meadowlands uh, with February snow versus playing it in a dome somewhere. Last question I have for you. Okay. If we're right about this with the outcome, and then you're you're now looking at uh, Peyton Manning's third Super Bowl and, and being one and two in Super Bowls, the, how how much does that uh, work against him historically? Not that much. Really. Okay. I mean, 
it's funny. I, I got into a debate with a buddy about a month ago, Brady or Manning, that mm-hmm. debate. And, you know, right now I guess it's kind of maybe a little easier to say Manning. Really? Because I kind of I, – I lean Brady. I still do too. I mean, I still – well, I mean, I know you don't like who my number one quarterback is of all time, John Elway. Really? Yeah. Oh, I say Montana and then Otto Graham. First of all. Yeah. Stop. Why? Okay, one of them. I'll leave this up to the listeners to decide who I'm talking about here without mentioning anything. Okay, there was like eight teams and no black. Okay. One of them made ten championship games in a row, and I think it's the same guy. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now on to Joe Montana. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> he had the greatest receiver of all time. Look, I'm not penalizing him for it, but it bears mentioning. John Elway. I want a guy who lost more did Super Bowls than he won. Did he have the greatest wide receiver of all time, or did Jerry Rice have the greatest quarterback of all time? Let's check it in the egg. Jerry Rice, the greatest <laughs> receiver of all time. Jerry Rice was still good with Steve Young. Don Hudson says hi. Don Hudson? <laughs> well, okay, let me tell you something. Receivers before 1975 don't count. Really? Like when you could mug them legally at the line of scrimmage, when you could legally take a crowbar to their helmet? I uh, never saw that happen. <laughs> well, you know. Listen here. I'm told listen that's good. the way it went. <laughs> John Elway, you talk about a guy who had a losing record in Super Bowls? Yeah. First three Denver teams he took to Super Bowls yeah. were not good teams. And they they only got the Super Bowl because of him. They were the inferior team both. I've said this before on the show. They were the inferior team both years against the Browns. Mm-hmm. One they of them kind of made it to the Super Bowl because of Ernest Biner, as I have a sour memory. Should have lived yeah. Should have, would have. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And guess why they made it the year before in Cleveland? Because Elway drove a stake into their heart, 98 yards long. Yeah. What do you guys, how, how do you like them apples? Ah. Well, you know, Marty was playing the prevent defense against them. Three-man oh. rush. Oh. I blame that on Marty. Yeah, I'll Funny how the history books don't. Re- By the way, too, you got an how come, excuse for everything. How don't come you? it's only people in Cleveland that have noticed this? Rich Carlos's quote-unquote game-winning kick actually went outside the bar. How come nobody outside of Cleveland ever ever talks about that? Because it's a conspiracy by the worldwide leader. They just want to make us mourn for Bill Buckner. <laughs> well. Get out of here, Cleveland fans. <laughs> I just thought I'd get that in there about Carlos. He missed the quote-unquote game-winning kick. Stop. <laughs> okay. I suppose you think Scott Norwood's field goal was good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know that one wasn't, but oh, okay. uh, Car- Carlos whiffed his, but go ahead. How about Ray Finkel? How about his kick? <laughs> Laces out, laces out. By the way, what was the kick? Was it South Carolina, Missouri Saturday night? I know we shouldn't talk to your boy Faruglia because he doesn't watch college football. It's not entertaining <laughs> enough. But a guy who's not the Bob Sacramento of yeah. this show. But if Jason Jones is listening, he is laughing, busting a nut right now. But I think the guy screwed up with laces out on the South really? Carolina, on the Missouri kick. Yeah, <laughs> and they were making fun of it. Oh, that's, that's all I got about that. That's awesome. Yeah, that's like, awesome. Oh, we were, oh, best quarterbacks of all time. That's where this tangent started. Oh, okay, he's in the discussion. I mean, I, look, I think Peyton's just name, outside of the top five. If you, no, I have him top four. Really? Yeah, I don't have your boy Otto Graham. Really? No. How high do you have Otto Graham? I don't know. Honorable mention? Really? He's the best quarterback named Otto. How about that? <laughs> That's pretty disrespectful of a guy that went to 10 championship games in a row. Yeah, well, it's easy when there's six teams. <laughs> there was more than six teams. There was not more you than six teams. You were exaggerating. There was not. It was like that the, was after the AAFL merger. It was, the, it, was the, it was like the Canton Bulldogs, the Decatur Staley's, <laughs> and the Cleveland Browns. That the was, only three teams. That was after. And one of them didn't make the playoffs. That was after the AAFL merger of 1950. So, so you're just making up leagues at this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, of the Browns' eight world championships, it is true that four came from the AAFL. But the the Browns still, by the way, a Squealer fan, Browns have eight world championships. You have six. Okay, proceed. Yeah, and none of them counted for the Browns. Sure they did. The NFL championships didn't start with Super Bowls, Kyle Ross. Don't be ahistorical like our friends in Pittsburgh, okay? Let's not be ahistorical here. Pretend that the uh, the term championship originated with the term Super Bowl. Well, it I not. want every Babe Ruth and Henry Aaron statue torn down so we can give the so we could build them to the great Sadahara O. How about that? <laughs> or Josh Gibson. Talk about leagues that got screwed. Yeah, the Negro leagues, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't forget Oscar Chamberlain while you're at it, and some of the other uh, players from back in the day. Yeah, just babbling incoherently. Now yeah, do we have a point? Is there? I a don't thread? know. We're just saying we've things lost, right now. We, <laughs> we've completely lost the thread here, ladies and gentlemen. The thing of it is, though, this is the perverse thing between you and I. Yes. Is it sometimes when we lose the thread? That's like when we do some of our best stuff. Yeah, I know. By the way, I, I would. Do you know what? Do you know what is like the? If there could have been a sporting event mm-hmm. in the past that it now can no longer happen, that I would have paid if I could build a time machine, make Negro. Negro League All Stars versus the Major League Baseball All Stars. I would like to love to see it, just because, like, of just like the tension in the air the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, you know, that uh, might get a little bit sour once Bob Feller starts dropping n bombs. But you oh, know. Jesus! <laughs> Which I will say, 
our good friend from the 21st Century Media Alliance, Russ Cohen, will never forgive Bob Feller nor his memory because he was in an elevator with him one time at a uh, uh, one of these memorabilia events, and yeah. Bob, Bob Feller was dropping end bombs. Jesus, <laughs> it's like Bob. that's the only thing he remembers about him. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wow. I don't want to hear about his on-field stuff, but he dropped end bombs. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like some of these Lou Reed discussions that have been going on recently. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I guess. I guess that's as good of a note to end it on as any. Yes. R.I.P. Lou Reed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> as we bring the show to a close, we would like to extend our deepest gratitude to NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox, all clear channel affiliates, TNT, TBS, USA, UPN, Deadspin.com, YouTube.com, YTMND.com, MySpace.com, various blogs, Fox News, CNN, CNBC, MSNBC, IAmBoard.com, Billboard.com, Google.com, ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN News, ESPN Classic, NBA TV, NFL Network, Sports Time Ohio, Athlon Magazine. Comedy Central, Cartoon Network, The Boomerang Channel, QVC, BET, The Spice Channel, Steno Notebooks, Manwich, Papermate Office Supplies, Waitresses, Strippers, Bartenders, Garbage Men, Janitors, Microwave Popcorn, The Writers of The Office, Scrubs, Entourage, My Name is Earl, Oz, Metalocalypse, and The Boondocks, Aquafina, and The Periodic Table of Elements. 